did good this morning. Well, the light white, sir. They always do. Hey, man. Hey. What's up? Good morning. My name is Kevin Nooner. I'm the lay leader here at Springfield First United Methodist Church and want to welcome you to our service time together. We're so glad to look out and see all of you. It's so nice that you're here with us. Um, if you're visiting with us today, I want to extend a special welcome to you. And whether you are here in person or you're joining us by Facebook or YouTube, either now or later, we're glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. I do have several announcements that I want to go over this morning. Um, UMYF will meet um, tonight at 5 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall and uh, are going to be doing maybe a little celebration because it is National uh, Cereal Day. So if you didn't know that, National Cereal Day. 
Um, we're going to be continuing our Wednesday night together um, this Wednesday. We will meet at 6 o'clock in the Moore Center and continue our prayer series. Uh, we do have a couple of slots that are open for the summer mission trip to Copper Hill. Uh, we've got about space for about 14 more youth and or adults. So if you are interested in going on that mission trip, please reach out to the church office. And you'll see that the Stephen ministers will be having a meeting on the 15th of March. I bring that up this week because we canceled that first one because of the snow. So we'll be meeting next week, uh, March 15th at 6 o'clock in the Moore Center. There's a program in Robertson County where the Sheriff's Department actually go and check on elderly individuals that don't have families that can help take care of them. They've actually reached out to the church office and there is, there's a family that needs some assistance buying groceries and with a little bit of meal prep. So if that's something that you are interested in helping with, please reach out to the church office um, to assist in that ministry. And then you will find out uh, here in the best of you, we've got some sign-up sheets for Rise Against Hunger. That will be on April the 10th and two shifts from 10 until 12 and then one until three. So if you are interested in either one of those, please sign up on those sheets outside the sanctuary here. And then finally for the announcements, uh, just remember that next Sunday is second Sunday in March, which is time change. Uh, so don't forget to change your clocks um, on next early, I guess early Sunday morning. We wanna lift up several in our prayers this week. Um, Carrie Malone had a stroke on Tuesday night and is currently in Skyline. Uh, Martha Farmer also had a stroke, but is recovering at home. We want to raise uh, Phil Spicer up. He is at Vanderbilt um, with a severe medication reaction. Also want to raise up Callie Moulton, um, was having a procedure this morning uh, for her, on her lungs. And then we want to continue to pray for Betty Ruth Noakes, who's recovering from brain surgery, and also for Kathy Keegan, who's recovering from neck surgery. Um, so several within our congregation and community that continue to need uh, prayers for healing and recovery from those illnesses and surgeries. Um, and with that, let's continue with our worship time this morning. Thank you, Kevin. We are glad that you have chosen to join us this morning for worship, whether you're here with us live or joining us virtually. We thank you for attending to worship this week. Let's stand together as we sing our opening hymn. Come thou almighty king.
as we prepare as we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, we always share in the invitation, confession, and pardon. And I want to just remind everyone that we'll be sharing Holy Communion today with you like we did this last month, where uh, Kevin and I will be wearing gloves and our mask, and we'll come in the pew that's in front of you that's empty, and we will hand you a self-contained uh, communion elements. Um, so we'll be sharing communion that way. And there is a layer of plastic that uncovers the wafer, and then there's a second layer of plastic that uncovers the juice. So we hope that you can participate that way. Also, this last week we did a devotion that encouraged those that are at home to gather elements, bread and juice, for Holy Communion if they want to participate. So let us move forward now as we share in the invitation, confession, and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Would you join me? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's continue in a time of prayer this morning. We give you an opportunity for silent prayer, and then I'll lead us in a morning prayer together. Let us pray. Everlasting and eternal God, we come to you this morning with hearts overflowing with joy and praise in worship, in worship to you, our all powerful God. Lord, you've created this earth and we are thankful for another day. We're thankful for the changing of the seasons. We're thankful for your presence in our life every day. Lord, we have many things that we carry around with us that are heavy on our shoulders, that burden our hearts, that cloud our vision. And we're thankful that we serve a Lord that asks us to bring those things to him and to lay them down to release ourselves from that bondage, to free ourselves to serve you and to love others around us. Lord, we bring those things to you today. As we celebrate Holy Communion, we're reminded of the, the great sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, who chose to die on the cross an atonement for those sins who chose to, to look each of us in the face and say, I will go in your place. Lord, we're thankful for that. We're thankful that we serve a Lord of grace and of mercy. God, you are all powerful and you are the great healer and the great physician and we have lifted many up this morning that need healing that have caregivers that need strength and resilience and wisdom. Lord, as they go through their journeys of healing and recovery, 
I pray that they will feel you there with them. We know that you never left, but help them be reminded of that. Lord, we confess those times to you where we have not followed your will, where we have strayed away from you. Give us eyes that you have to see the world, to see where the needs are. Give us the courage to meet those needs, to be the hands and the feet for Jesus for all of those that we come in contact with. Lord, I pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross as atonement for our sins, that we could live with you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit in all of eternity. Amen. I'd like to thank Elaine and Laura and Brad for joining me this morning as we uh, bring you a piece entitled Fill Me Up. I think it goes very well with Brother Jerry's sermon this morning. Filling me up to the top of my soul. Filling me up, come the Holy Spirit. Filling me up now and take control. Filling me up, come the Holy Spirit. Filling me up to the top of my soul. Filling me up, come the Holy Spirit. Filling me up now and take control. Filling me up, come the Spirit, come. Filling me up, Holy Spirit. Oh, so many things try to fill me. So many things try to weigh me down. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit. Come. Fill me hard now until you stay. Fill me up, come the Spirit. Come. Chase the other things away. Fill my heart, come Spirit. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit. Fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit. Fill me up now and take control. Fill me. Come, the Spirit, come, fill me up, Holy Spirit, oh, come, my heart is an open door. Fill me up, come, the Spirit, come, here your Spirit is welcome, oh. Fill me up, come, the Holy Spirit, come. Fill my heart now and let it grow. Fill me up, come, the Spirit, come, change my life so all will know. Fill my heart, you come and fill me up. Holy Spirit, filling me up to the top of my soul. Filling me up, come the Holy Spirit, filling me up now and take control. Filling me up, come the Holy Spirit, filling me up to the top of my soul. Filling me up, come the Holy Spirit, filling me up now and take control. Filling me up now and take control. Filling my heart, come Spirit, filling me up, filling me up. Amen. Wasn't that wonderful? Thank you all so much for sharing that with us. Shane, I had a church member at Mount Zion in the Clarksville District, Red River District now, and a song like that would be offered, and Bill would say, boy, that was a real toe tapper. <laughs> that meant it was wonderful. It was a real toe tapper. So today we share in the scripture from the gospel according to John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, 
Why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used for the, by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servant, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside, and he said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine, after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Canaan of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now remember last week, we were talking about Self-denial, taking up our cross, and following Jesus. And we discovered with those three things that self-denial meant that we have recognized that there is a greater power, a higher God-given power beyond our own. And we have recognized that because of what Jesus has done, we need to surrender our lives to that care and the will of God. Self-denial means that we are placing God first in front of ourselves and that we're not allowing anyone or anything to interfere with our relationship with God. That's what self-denial means. That's what we focused on before. Taking up our cross means that we are willing to allow our lives to be so focused on Jesus and following Jesus. Following Jesus means that we don't get out in front of Jesus. We stay behind Jesus. Remember the scripture last week, Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. See, Peter was wanting to tell him another way or give him some advice on what to do. But we discover that we've got to follow Jesus instead of getting out in front of Jesus. Sometimes we make plans and we find ourselves running out ahead when he wants us to follow. So as we continue thinking about Lent, we want to focus on how we are still self-denying, taking up our cross, and following. Today in the scripture, we see in John's gospel that we are at the wedding at Cana. And most people recognize this scripture you probably heard it if you've been involved in church all your life if you're newer to church it may be a new story to folks and we have to keep that in mind folks we have to keep that in mind that we may have people in our church that are visiting or people that are joining us online that this is new to them but what we discover is in the gospel of john that this story is telling about a wedding that took place in cana and what we've discovered is that Weddings were really big in that culture, and they're really big in most cultures. And they're big celebrations of family and the whole community. Jesus and the disciples were invited to the wedding. They would have traveled a great distance. So could you imagine Jesus at a wedding? Jesus loved the people. Jesus, in my opinion, would have been the life of the party. Let's pause there for a minute. The life of the party. He would have been the life figuratively and literally. Amen? The life of the party. The one who could give life was at this wedding. And I could see him loving on the people 
I could see him celebrating with the group. I could see him maybe even dancing with the bride if he had the opportunity. I don't think we, we have to expand our imagination about Jesus. I don't think that Jesus is simply where we see in our churches the Solomon's pose. You know what I'm talking about? The picture of the painting in the church where it's Jesus and he's going... You know what I'm talking about? The serious pose where he's just serious. I believe Jesus continues to be the Savior of the world. He has saved us all from our sins through his cross. But I think Jesus laughed. I think Jesus interacted. And I'm sure it was a joy to have him at this wedding. They wanted him there. They invited him to be there. Many wanted to be with Jesus. And his presence would have enriched their lives. Don't you agree that his presence continues to enrich our lives? Now, as we think about this wedding, food and beverage would have been a huge element in this wedding. And in most weddings, it's a very important part of the reception. Now, you've got some people in modern day that will say, well, a cake... Some nuts and a little butter mints and some punch is all we need. And some folks say, no, we got to have a spread. That's what my mama called it. you got to have a spread. That means there's going to be plenty of food for folks. And I've been to Jewish weddings and I've been to Jewish receptions, and the food is always very rich and plenty, and the beverage is always there for who chooses to drink anything from water to wine. And it's always a very wonderful experience. So imagine, if you will, at this wedding reception, everything was great, everything's wonderful, everyone's enjoying their time. And then they discover that the wine is all gone. Can you imagine someone who's serving goes up, grabs the last bottle, and it goes drip, drip, and it's gone. This would have been... A crisis. The rabbi said that without wine, there's no joy. Wine represented the joy and the presence of it. So we see Mary, the mother of Jesus, noticing that a major issue has taken place. And as many who have heard the story know, she goes to Jesus And says to Jesus, all the wine is gone. And Jesus basically says, and he doesn't say, Mama. The scriptures say, he says, Woman, my time has not yet come. He says, it's not my time to do something. I'm just here at the wedding. But in complete Mama fashion... We love you, mamas. She goes to the stewards of the party, and she says, do whatever he tells you to do. So I could just see Jesus taking a big breath. Get those six water jars, fill them with water. Now, the jars that he was referring to were jars that were used for cleansing and for purification rites, their religious activities, they would use those. And each jar, the scripture says, would hold 20 to 30 gallons of water, six jars. So you think about this, say a 30-gallon jar times six, I made C's in math, but I think it's 180. Fingers and toes, I'm going 180. So 180 gallons were put in those jars. And Jesus says, now go take some of this to the master of the banquet, the head person in charge of the whole event. Take some. The master of the event takes a sip and he says, this is good stuff. He said, this is wonderful And he basically says, you know the rules. We usually 
put out the good stuff first. Everybody enjoys it. Everybody gets a little past being completely, you know. And we put out the cheaper stuff or the thinned out stuff to finish the party. And he says, but he goes to the bridegroom and he says, what's the deal? This is the best stuff that's available. And everyone was blessed by the miracle. Jesus turned the water into wine. That was his first miracle that John records. The good stuff was available to them now. Everyone benefited from this experience. The presence of Jesus Christ changed their lives forever. It shows us that Jesus is serious about taking care of his people, that there was a need present, and he allowed his power, love, and grace to be shared to transform people's lives. It was a great celebration. That's the wedding at Cana. For the last several weeks and basically over a month, I've been dealing with the phrase emptied and filled. It's coming through my mind all the time. Empty and filled, empty and filled, empty and filled. So I did what the scriptures say. It talks about testing the spirits. It talks about getting it before God. And I started praying and spending time in Scripture talking about it and spending time seeking God's guidance and what in the world this was going to do and how I could share it. I knew I didn't want to get in front of God, so I was staying behind God saying, God, show me empty and filled. What in the world am I supposed to say? Well, I've, I've got a few things I want to share with you that are on my heart about it. And I want to share with you about how Jesus helps us to go from being empty to filled. Amen? Let me just share those thoughts with you. Well, practically speaking, we know that during the season of Lent, we are encouraged to deny ourselves. We are encouraged to empty ourselves of things in our lives that interfere with our relationship with God. Whether that's a a habit or a hobby or way we're eating, drinking, whatever we're doing, who we're spending time with, if there's something that's interfering with our relationship with God, we are called to empty ourselves of that. And we're encouraged to fill ourselves with godly things and godly activities. We're encouraged to ask God to help us to get rid of all the junk in our lives. And there's a lot of junk out there. That we're to empty ourselves of that and allow God to help us go from being empty to filled. That's the season of Lent. That's what we're called to do during the season of Lent, and it repeats itself during the season of Advent as we're preparing for the coming of Jesus. What do we need to do to get closer to God? So that's one thought that I had about being emptied and filled. But I find myself going deeper in some sense as I, I studied the scripture, the wedding at Cana, and I got to thinking that these individuals that were at the wedding are people just like us. Now they're a different culture and different time frame, I understand that. But people just like us, human beings with celebrations, with triumphs, and with tragedies. Human beings. Human beings that had all been invited to the wedding, who had come and for just a little while, while they were celebrating, maybe they wouldn't be so focused on the stuff. We discover in this passage that Jesus was there. So the presence of Jesus helped to elevate 
what was going on in their lives. And in my imagination, I thought about how these individuals, just like us, would have had issues in their lives that emptied them out, that poured them out, poured them out, poured out their lives to the point of exhaustion where they might have felt empty. I think they all were in a place for a reason. You know, you've heard me talk about divine appointments. You've heard me focus on how God will place us in a specific place to encounter God as individuals and as a group. And I believe this was an opportunity for this in, these people gathered here to get some relief. How they could come as empty people and be filled. The presence of Jesus filled them once again. They're just like us. They all have their issues. Church, friends, family, anyone that's joining us virtually, the question I want to ask you today is, do you ever feel like you're empty? If you say no, we need to have a talk. We all have moments when we have poured out our lives. All of us, let's be honest, we pour out our lives, we pour out our lives, we pour out our lives for one thing or another, and we may have a feeling of emptiness. We've all had our moments. Maybe the issues of our lives have been so overwhelming that it's caused us to feel empty. COVID has been enough to wear us out. Amen? And if we're honest, people, places, and things sometimes will just suck the life out of us. Just wear us out. Now don't go to thinking about who, who just did that to you. Don't look at your spouse or your friend nearby either. Do you understand what I'm, I'm saying? I had a preacher that would say, are you picking up what I'm laying down? And I'd get tickled at Jeff when he'd say that. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? And what that means is we all have had our moments where we're worn, we're tired, and we feel like empty vessels. The scripture today says that the wine was gone. The bottles of wine were empty. And as I think about that phrase, emptied and filled, I think about how, yes, that wine was gone, and yes, those bottles were empty, but Jesus was at the wedding. He told them to take different jars, not the wine jars. He told them to take different jars and fill them to the brim with water. The new jars were filled. And the power and presence of Jesus changed that water into wine. And everyone benefited from the miracle of Jesus. Empty and filled is on my mind. And it reminds me that we can go to 2 Corinthians 5.17 and say what it has before us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The new has come and the old is gone. The new is here. The old is gone and the new is here. Yes, there are times when we feel empty and we feel poured out. But we don't have to stay empty. We have the presence and power of Jesus to make us new creations. The wine bottles were empty. Jesus didn't say, go get them and fill them again. He said, go get these bigger ones and fill them with the water that he turned into wine. As we look at our lives... We don't have to stay stuck and empty because the new life of Jesus is available to us right now. 
John in chapter 4 says that Jesus proclaims that he is the living water that will satisfy us. So in these new vessels because of Jesus, we have that living water in our lives. And we don't have to stay empty. We can be filled. Amen? We can be filled. In the filling process, Jesus turns our sadness into joy. Jesus turns our grim faces into relieved smiles. Jesus turns our whimpers of fear and anxiety into songs of hope. He turns sin into grace-filled lives, and he turns our death into life. He helps us to go from being emptied to filled. The reality of it all, folks, is we cannot fill our own emptiness. Because if we try, we'll fill it with the wrong things. I told 9 o'clock that I went up to spend the night with my mother, and mom always has treats like a lot of moms, grandmas have. And I go into the kitchen, and there's a basket of the little Twix single bite things. Little Debbie cakes of every kind they make. And then you go over by the stove and there's at least 14,000 different kinds of potato chips. And I'm going, and I only ate one Twix. Hallelujah. Well, within the first hour. And then, <laughs> no, I had another Twix later that day. But do you understand what I'm saying? If we try to fill our lives, we're going to mess up. But when Jesus fills our lives, we get the good stuff all the time. Yes, there will be times where we'll feel empty, empty and we'll need to be filled. But just like Mary, when those crises come, we go to Jesus. Because no one else will satisfy. I do want to bring to your attention as we think about our own personal lives, we also have to think about ministry. Because as we're helping each other, as we're ministering to people in our community, we will pour out and we will empty out and we'll be tired. And we have to make sure that we remember to get filled again. As we deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus, we need to realize that it's a continuous feeling process. He always gives us the good stuff. Regardless of where emptiness develops, remember that Jesus is the life of the party. That people are changed in mind, body, spirit, and relationships when Jesus is present. Just imagine what can continue to happen as we realize and acknowledge the presence of Jesus in our midst. I can't answer for you, but I have moments when I'm tired of losing my joy and I feel empty. But Jesus comes and he helps us in our lives. The miracle happened because of the presence and power of Jesus it wasn't what humanity did. It's what Jesus does. Emptied and filled. We don't have to stay empty. And Jesus is ready to fill us all the time. The old song says, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. I just want to thank 
you, Lord. You've saved my soul. You've saved my soul. You've saved my soul. I just want to thank you, Lord. I say these things in the name of the Christ. Amen. And now let us share in the great thanksgiving as you see it on the screen. And please participate in the bold print. The Lord be with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And in so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I stated earlier, you will be served in your pew. We will come in the empty pew and hand you the elements.
Has everyone been served? I'll be glad to bring it to you. as we conclude our service with Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It is always my prayer that we've all had the opportunity to have an encounter with God, to hear God say to us how much we are loved and cared for. Go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, seeking to live well, to laugh often, and to love extravagantly, doing it all in Jesus' name. Amen.